This is the game Steins Gate Zero should have been. First, and I'm gonna be honest with you friends, I almost shut this off in disgust when the first thing you see is this dude trying to sabotage the new Reinet Battlers game because he thinks it's a capitalist shill for a bunch of illiterate sheep that don't understand any of the characters and he's portrayed as the bad guy? I swear to god, I have never in my life so thoroughly related to a character. But then it does a big rug pull and shows us that he did nothing wrong and that everyone is a victim of the true evil capitalism which Okabe goes around destroying with facts and logic in an alpaca costume reminiscent of 90s corporations catching in on the superhero boom. I don't know what part of this is my favorite. Him using the phone wave name subject to change to fight crime. The utter ridiculousness of his costume. The part where they somehow integrated the alpaca man to a whole thing making it Okabe's inner voice not unlike the green goblin. The fact that he uses hot sauce as his main weapon which immediately reminded me of one of the first videos I tried to make for my channel. I'm cosplay, 1990s Japan. Actually wow that is super embarrassing let's come back to this. No, amazing as the whole alpaca man thing is, the real reason I like this game so much comes down to one simple idea. Who is the most important character in Steins Gate? Krisu? No. Okabe? No. Suzaha? Disappointed lol, but no. No, I recently finished my series analyzing literally every single episode of Steins Gate, and my read on the story is that Steins Gate is about the beauty of the everyday. The reason it spends so much time developing the characters in the world isn't just to develop their relationships, it's because of that is the most important part of the story. It's not the existential, philosophical time travel stuff that's important. It's the familiar, ordinary, boring, every day that is the most beautiful thing in the world. And the character that understands this more than anyone, the person who most embodies the beauty of the mundane, is Mayuri. Only Mayuri truly understands friendship and happiness and the meaning of life. Mayuri is the most important character in Steins Gate. And so playing Linear Bounded Finnegram and discovering that it's about how core Mayuri is to the lab and the world of Steins Gate and that every character in every relationship just kind of falls apart without her left me so fucking pleased with myself that you can probably hear the tip of my erect penis scraping against the microphone. I mean, I thought the Hello Kitty crossover visual novel was a little on the nose, but even that- Yeah, you heard me, subscribe for that video, weeb. Seems quaint compared to 4 Degrees C in this game. Or at least that's what I thought until the big rug pull where we learned that he's homeless because the real evil isn't the capitalists, it's the system that drives people to evil just to survive. And Okabe, as a hero taking a stand against the dirty capitalists, he's not protecting society from its evils, he's merely defeating the pathetic symptoms of those evils. And so him, dressing up as a superhero marketed to children with a growing appetite for consumerism, is not only fueling the fires of capitalism, questioning who the real villain is in Am I reading too much into this story about a dude who dresses up in an alpaca costume and squirts people with hot sauce? No, of course I'm not. Yes, the true villain he's been fighting all along has been the man. You know, the man. So why was Dado getting Opai mouse pads and fapping to all those doujins? Why was the Hello Kitty game an acceptable thing to publish because Jesus fucking Christ dude. Ah oh, I see, it's not your fault you sold out, it's the man's fault. I get it now. Here I am playing 3D checkers while they're busy playing 4D Rhinet battlers like fight the power bro. Okay on one hand, sure, fine, but on the other. Bro, what? There's even this random bit in the game where he takes on debt, but it gets absolved because he signed a predatory loan that Japan outlawed in 2010. Does Chio Madu work for the Ministry of Finance or something? Hello? Wait, I think we're getting ahead of ourselves here. Did this video have a point? Uh... Oh, that's right. Why was this not animated instead of Steins Gate Zero? This feels like not the Steins Gate sequel we need, but the one we deserve because every part of this just understands the point of Steins Gate so much. Every part of this is just dripping with class. Not just each of the roots, each told from a different character's point of view, even Mr. Braun. I really didn't think I'd like his root as much as I did. And we'll come back to the majority thing in a sec, but also the presentation and the aesthetic just 
absolutely nails Steins Gate, far more than even the original. This is some top shelf shit, I mean it looks absolutely gorgeous. The entire menu and interface is covered in this grungy retro futuristic aesthetic that just fucking oozes style. Transitioning between menu screens and choosing each route has this tangible, analog look that makes it feel so high tech yet so cool. Every character has a portrait painted in retro green LCD pixels, reminiscent of old 90s stereo systems. If you thought Okabe's Dixie Tube Clock kicked ass, imagine if the entire game were painted head to toe in that and you might come in your pants just a little. I mean, you can not only select world lines with mouse and keyboard, there's little buttons on screen you can press with your mouse to select. The amount of detail that went into this is insane. Now you might be like, okay, come on Weeaboo, this is a fucking menu. And, and yes, yes, it's just a glorified menu. but. Compare this to the other entries in this series, which had a menu pop up at random times, or in the case of My Darling's Embrace, set a fucking world record for impracticality with its menu that made you restart the game if you passed up any of its options without saving. Not to mention the absolutely asinine way of getting to the true ending that basically demands a walkthrough in both of those games. This? You select each branching route in the most stylish way possible. It's simple. It's cool. Yes, thank you. Sure, it's just a fucking menu, but let's not overcomplicate it. Simple doesn't mean it can't be cool. I love this. And it's not just the menu screen. There's like 11 different routes, one for every single character, and everyone has their own cell phone. In the original, and in My Darling's Embrace, you only stare at Okabe's for the entire time, but here, everyone has their own phone with their own wallpaper and ringtone. Like Danu has his wallpaper set to some pornographic lolly doujin game. Suzuha's is this rugged, almost military phone with a tough gray wallpaper. Mr. Braun has a photo of his daughter. Moika's is hip and stylish. Mayuri's is this bright green deal with an Upa wallpaper. Lukaku's is girly and pink. I actually think this is a little misplaced given his skull accessory, but whatever. Linear bounded Finnegram tries to insert as much personality into every single possible corner of the game. And speaking of phones, it'd be amiss of me to avoid talking about the collector's edition of this game that I bought so I could get my grubby little hands on the replica of Okabe's cell phone. I also went and got the closest approximation of his phone that I could find in real life so we could compare them. One thing you might not notice right away is that Okabe's phone isn't actually a flip phone. It, it kind of looks like one with how it's designed, but you know, this makes sense. He's not someone who would go out and buy the latest model. He'd buy something kind of old and practical and cheap. So what I have here is a 2007 W63K model in wine red from AU, and now AU actually stopped supporting 3G networks for Ganake phones a few years ago, so I can't actually go and show you two channel on this, but I will show you the basic menu and some pictures I took with this while we talk about the rest of it. One thing you might notice about Japanese phones is that they always make noise. This is to prevent people from taking upskirt shots of girls particularly schoolgirls on trains. I think it's actually illegal to sell a camera that doesn't make noise. Speaking of noise though, while this replica phone is, you know, fucking cool, if there's one complaint I have about it, it's that there is only four characters on here. Like, there's at least 10 buttons and eight lab members. What? What? Now, I'm assuming this is a storage limit for whatever cheap hardware they rammed into this so they could sell, you know, the collector's edition of a fucking video game, but still, kind of a miss. Also, I mean, Okabe is number four here and Kurisu is number one? That's backwards. I guess Kurisu is like the most popular, but still. I Really? Okay, so speaking of all the different characters and their phones, the other thing that I really like about Linear Bounded Finnegram is that, while My Darling's Embrace is about exploring each of the characters' relationships after the events of Steins Gate, here we get to see how Mayuri's death affects everyone around him. Seeing their jovial and off-kilter friend just spontaneously erupt into this broken mess of a person affects all of them. There's this moment in Kurisu's route where she sees him pick up the phone and immediately turn to destroy the time leap machine and she too dies a little inside as she realizes what her invention has done to the man she loves. Steins Gate is about the beauty of the everyday and here we see it corrupted by the hands of time as Okabe becomes isolated from the rest of the universe. In these little moments looking on as Okabe withdraws from the world, his mind crumbling from the loss of Mayuri. What I love most about this is not just Kurisu's pain in seeing her lover like this, but the other little thoughts she has. As she holds the broken Okabe in her arms, her heart skips a beat as she realizes she can't help but be a little bit elated that her time leap machine 
worked perfectly. Even here, she can't stop being curious and proud and proud of her own curiosity. I mean, it's obvious. It's a thought that she basically says out loud in Steins Gate. <laughs> But hearing her not only say it here, but having her realize that this is the kind of person she is and feel both pride and shame in it, takes it just that much further. Same with Suzaha's route, where we see this hilarious sitcom type thing where there's three versions of her just sitting in a circle bickering about which one is the real Suzaha. And so here we get to see her confront her hatred of Kurisu, this loathing for someone she doesn't know for something that hasn't happened yet, and we get to see they have so much in common. Well, Suzaha never really got the chance to develop a personal relationship with any of the other characters besides Okabe and Nai. In Ferris's route, we get to see her team up with Ferris to fight crime in skin tight suits and okay, at this point, they're just asking for Dojenshi to be drawn. No, hold on a second. Okay, you're not going to believe this, but I can't find any doujins written about this. Not that they don't exist, they're by definition independently published, so they're often not documented well, but I couldn't find any. I kind of don't believe this. I mean, Ferris is probably the least popular character in Japan, weirdly enough, given the whole, you know, maid thing. But given that doujinshi.org just kind of went down and I don't think there's actually even a Japanese equivalent, I've kind of just given up looking. I mean, they must exist. I just- Oh dear God, no more distractions. Okay, so this is a great exploration of Ferris's character about how her character is putting on a mask because her entire life is playing a role as an escape from her real life. She has so much placed on her shoulders that she needs some kind of escape from reality, which comes out in the form of this obnoxious, cutesy number one cat girl maid. And so this superhero shtick with Suzaha is just one more mask, one more escape from the dark reality that is her life, and we see her hiding more and more to the point where she starts to dissociate from reality just a little bit. But what I like most about this is that putting them together shows us that they're both wearing masks, and seeing them together, you get to see how similar the two of them are. Ferris wearing the cat girl mask, and Suzaha pretending to be this cheery, happy-go-lucky girl as an escape from the dystopian future she comes from. Do you think it's a coincidence that they both have pigtails, which then come down as they go to bed together in this girly sleepover? Oh my god, they're just asking for it. Probably. But it did make me sound kind of smart just then, didn't it? And so together, they each get the chance to explore their own insecurities. This is exactly why the ending of Steins Gate is a happy ending for her, even though she still has to say goodbye to her father. Because getting to see him again, even though she knows it wasn't how things are meant to be, allowed her to come to terms with her father's death, to say all the things she never could, and to accept her life for what it is. And seeing this superhero outfit, this other mask, is an exploration of that not just for her, but for Suzaha too. So almost every single character's story in this game ties back to Mayuri in some way. Here, Ferris and Suzaha's superhero costumes are made by Mayuri, who encourages them to start cosplaying, which leads to them confronting their innermost fears, but I think the characters that most embody this are Moika and Ruka, who it immediately shows us topless. Gonna be honest, this is something that I did not expect. Oh dear god, no more distracts. So anyway, now that we're talking about superheroes again, this is probably as good a time as any to show you that 90s cup noodle superhero I was alluding to earlier. Ah! Oh. Yakisoba! <laughs> Speed! Ah! Yeah, that was the thing they made to advertise UFO Cup Yakisoba Noodle. And by thing, I mean series of commercials, direct-to-VHS movie, actually pretty good Super NES beat-em-up video game, among other things. So, get this, hot water makes him stronger, right? But cold water makes him weak. There's this bit in the movie where the reporter tries to do a bit on him, but ends up being an expose when he can't save a drowning kid because he can't jump into cold water. So according to the lore, and trust me when I say there's more than you'd think, he came from planet 
yakisoba to protect Japan's eating habits and also find the ideal woman, who is exactly 170 centimeters tall and 55 kilograms. I could go on about how much I love this movie, about how many bondage jokes there are, about the part where this girl is just pinned to the wall screaming while having balls thrown at her because Japanese comedy, I guess. <laughs> about how this is just the slightest bit racist. Or I could maybe talk about that surprisingly good video game, but was there actually a point in me showing you this? Uh, yeah, not really. So, in the Ruka route, we see Ruka confront her own powerlessness and realizing that without Mayuri, she needs to have the strength to let Okabe stand on his own two feet. And, uh... And this that I had to censor. So hey, for all those people that were hoping to see Ruka as more trans, and this may or may not be canon, but I'm gonna be referring to her as she here, not just because it's the female Ruka, but also because she basically pretty explicitly spells out that male Ruka is indeed trans. What we see is her resenting herself and her body, for despite hating being a boy with every fiber of her being, she agrees to change back because even more than that, she hates feeling weak and powerless, and if being a boy could save Mayuri's life, Life, then that is at least taking some action rather than nothing. Because Mayuri isn't just her best friend, Mayuri is the person who gave her the strength to live on in her fragile body, so without her, what kind of person would she be? And she looks inwards to find that strength, and to be that strength for Okabe, and erase the bad ending that left her with this body she so desired. Every character gets to become their true self because of Mayuri's influence. While Okabe is the one that brought Moeka to the lab, Mayuri is the one that made her feel truly welcome, brightly showing friendship to this girl she just met. And so we see Moeka become conflicted about her dual life as both a rounder and a member of the future gadget laboratory. She can't tell FB about her friendship at the lab because she'd be betraying FB, and she can't tell the lab about the rounders, so even though she's surrounded by people who care about her, she's still feels alone. But eventually, due to Mayuri's friendship, she manages to think for herself and save her friend's lives by learning that true friendship is selflessness and gives up her own life. Mayuri is the one that every single character comes to rely on. Mayuri is the soul of the lab and it's her that brings everyone together. I think if there's one complaint I have about this game, it's there's no real ending. It's just a bunch of short stories, only some of which are even kind of connected, and then it just ends. But at the same time, I think that's exactly the point. The running theme throughout the whole game, well, besides capitalism, again, it's a little weird how much this comes up given the Hello Kitty crossover game, which we'll talk about pretty soon, is that Mayuri is the core of the story, and without her, every character just kind of wanders through life aimlessly, having lost the person anchoring them to reality. The entire point is that it's meaningless and broken, because there is no lab without Mayuri. So what kind of story could you really have? This game perfectly gets that, and so I'm confused why they adapted Steins Gate Zero instead of this, which is sitting right here. If you missed my last essay about this and what Steins Gate Zero should have been, be sure to check that out. Otherwise, tune in for next time when we talk about when Steins Gate was actually a game. As always, thank you so much for your time, friends, and I will see you in the next video.